Hey, what's up, Pastafarians? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we have a cool tutorial to show you how to quickly make some particles with just a few simple strokes. So let's get right to it. No, you're, you're not looking at his noodly appendage, but we are looking at the particles that we're going to make. So this stuff right here is not actually what I'm talking about, these bumps and stuff. You could kind of make that with this technique, but you'd have to do a little bit more work to make a highlight, and it wouldn't really be um, a line like this. It would be dots. But let me show you what I am talking about. Let's turn off these cell bumps right here. And it's really these things that I'm talking about. Now you see there's a slight flaw in this technique in that at the end, sometimes depending on how this stuff is wiggled, a particle can pop on and off. But as you can see, I was hiding it behind another bump. So it works out okay. There are ways around that and I'll show you that later. So in this other shit layer here, you know, your mitochondria and all your other assorted crap that's in a cell, we have just one path right here. And uh, it's an actual parametric ellipse. And I made it just a little bit weird so it's not completely circular. And then to kind of slow this thing from happening a lot, we have a little bit of trim paths on it. And then a wiggle paths. And you just have to mess around with the size and the detail to get the kind of the movement that you want. And you can change the random seed too if you don't like the certain movement. And then the key is in the stroke. With the dash set to zero and the line cap set to round. And then the gap is 73. I mean this gap can be whatever. I'm going to turn off this turbulent displace a little bit so it's quicker. Uh, I'll turn on the other cell too. So now this actually loops around, you can play around with the distances and change it up. So you can get more particles or less. But it's really pretty simple. So I'm going to close that up. Turn that back on. And set this back on. So in between making the examples, I accidentally stumbled on some intestines, which I'm sure has happened to you before. To make that, you just do the same kind of technique. Set your dash to zero and then uh, set a gigantic stroke width. Make sure your cap is round. And then your gap just needs to be less than your stroke. So, so instead of having dots, you get bumps and you get intestines. All right, moving on. So I was trying to recreate the bumps from the first example because I was curious if these would actually stay together or if the wiggle pads would work differently on different paths. But it doesn't, so that's actually kind of useful. So you can take one path and positionally offset another one so that you can have a shadow. And if you wanted to highlight, you could do the same thing with a smaller stroke. Just move it off and to the right. So this technique is one that you actually really have to mess around with to get the look that you're looking for. Like when I was saying you can mess around with it so you don't actually lose a dot, well, you actually have to play around with this over here. Usually if you set the details to something crazy, like four even, you can see how much more manic this thing gets. And then this one comes in and out. You can change the size down with more complexity. Then they'll like vibrate. You can go back up with the complexity. You can go back up with the size. Turn the detail down to like two. Go even more with that. So if you turn it down from here and you go down to one, you can see that won't disappear anymore. It's obviously less crazy, but you won't have particles and things popping in and out. You can play with trim pads or changing the stroke size to animate these things on and off. And it really is quite simple. We can actually add more to this shape by stopping this, getting our again tool up, drawing a new line, then opening up the stroke right here, changing this dash to zero, making this butt cap into a round cap, adding a gap, spreading it out, and now they'll move too. It can get as crazy as you want with the path. Let's stop this again. You can add some more points in here. Have this thing loop back in on itself. You can add more lines. You can really go crazy with this thing. You get all sorts of different looks with it. Obviously, I'd probably change the movement down a little bit, but keep in mind that the size and detail are based on how many points you have and the distance between them. So as you can see, this is a lot closer together than this probably is, so this moves faster. So that's just something to be aware of. All right, I have one more example to show you guys. Uh, it's over here. I don't know if you noticed that this null had some keyframes, so there was something else to, to look at real quick. Oh my, it's, it, it's glorious. Behold, FSM himself. Perhaps you did see his noodly appendage after all. <laughs> all right, guys, I am Joe from Workbench. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what I do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. As always, make sure you follow us on workbench.tv, and I'll see you guys next week. Ramen. Bye.